Good evening, Fiend fans. And welcome to my crawly crypt. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 horror TV shows. You can breathe. You can blink. You can cry. Hell, you're all gonna be doing that. For this list, we'll be looking at the most spine-tingling horror, sci-fi, and thriller shows to hit the small screen. Did we miss any of your favorites? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Dark. Written in German, a title card reads, the distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. This is a quote by Albert Einstein in the opening words of Netflix's Dark. They ominously set the stage for the show's spooky sci-fi premise, which throughout its three seasons, sees its ensemble cast of characters travel through a variety of different eras and dimensions. Although the series' dramatic location hopping can be seen as too complex or even disorienting to some viewers, to those who stick with it, it's an incredibly rewarding ride. Es gibt Dinge da draußen, die wir mit unserem kleinen Verstand niemals begreifen werden. Its central mystery is compelling to watch unravel, and its expertly crafted score is eerie enough to unsettle even the toughest of horror fans. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Number 19, Masters of Horror. Are you in the mood to watch a film about Edgar Allan Poe's run-in with an evil cat, or a darkly comedic body horror romance about two women who become bugs? Maybe you're even feeling brave enough to watch the controversial Takashi Miike film deemed too extreme for Showtime. Regardless of your taste, it's likely that there's an episode of Masters of Horror for you. You been to Psych yet? Ah, come on, Charlie. No, 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 Frank, no, no, this is standard up. It's not my call. The anthology series comprises 26 hour-long episodes, all by different horror directors and all self-contained. This means that each episode is basically its own mini-movie, and the series' director lineup includes some pretty big names in the genre, including John Carpenter, Dario Argento, and Toby Hooper. Number 18, Servant. Since the success of The Sixth Sense in 1999, M. Night Shyamalan has been a reliable hit at the box office. In 2019, he decided to bring his unique brand of horror to the small screen, acting as showrunner and executive producer on Servant. Dorothy, you remember? Do you remember what happened to Jericho? The series tells the story of a young couple who suffer a tragic loss and begin to cope with their resulting trauma in an unconventional way. They end up going so far as to hire a nanny for their doll, inexplicably causing a strange and seemingly supernatural series of events in their home. When Dorothy gets back home tonight, the baby's gonna be in that crib. The breathing, kicking, pissing one. Agreed? Shh. It's a creepy tale with some major twists that has been praised by the likes of Stephen King and Guillermo del Toro. Number 17. Tales from the Crypt. If you've ever thought puppets were just for kids, we're sure the Crypt Keeper could persuade you to reconsider. Ah, poor little fellas. When I think of their childhood, all those cute little maggots. <laughs> In early HBO production, Tales from the Crypt pushed the boundaries of what could be shown on TV, including more violence, more profanity, and more nudity than many of its contemporaries. It did so in an anthology format with the Crypt Keeper acting as the show's creepy, wise-cracking host. The unprecedented creative freedom offered by the series' network and premise attracted several big names to its director's chair, including Richard Donner, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Tom Hanks. Unsurprisingly, people loved it, and it soon became popular enough to receive an animated spin-off and a toned-down run-in syndication on basic cable. So remember, boys and girls, safety first! <laughs> Number 16, Penny Dreadful. If you've been on the lookout for really great gothic horror, look no further than Penny Dreadful. As you grow up, you'll learn we all do things which cause us shame. Sins we have committed. With a name derived from cheaply made 19th century serials, the Showtime series resurrected classic characters like Victor Frankenstein, Dracula, and Dorian Gray for a new generation. Don't we all want to paint ourselves into something better than we are? Like its namesake, the show employs plenty of clever foreshadowing, flowery language, and grisly crimes, but thankfully subverts the term's association with poorly made products through its breathtakingly beautiful locations and set designs. Though the show's seemingly abrupt ending left some fans disappointed, its acting is considered to be just as consistently good as its visuals, with Ava Green's performance in particular making its three short seasons a worthwhile watch for any horror fan. To be beautiful is to be almost dead, isn't it? Number 15. Lovecraft Country. 
Horror has always been considered a refuge for marginalized outsiders, but until recently, the genre's mainstream representation on screen has been troublingly whitewashed. Lovecraft Country is in many ways the antithesis of this problematic history, a horror series that is directly impacted by the race of its protagonists at every turn. Look what we've been through to get here. Monsters, ghosts, a, a magical treasure hunt, curses, the past, the future, we can't stop fighting now. Set in the segregated American South, the show consistently pairs gnarly Lovecraftian creature designs with horrific instances of racism and implores viewers to decide which is more terrifying, humanity or monsters. And with historically influenced stories of assault, murder, and even illegal experimentation, it's often hard not to choose humanity. We've both done monstrous things, but that does not make us monsters. We could be the people we see in each other. We just have to choose to be. Number 14. Ash vs. Evil Dead Blood, guts, and a groovy good time. Over two decades after Army of Darkness hit theaters, Sam Raimi caved to fan demands for more Evil Dead and finally brought Ash Williams to the small screen. Yo, Granny! <laughs> Hope you took your Geritol. Time to dance! Hitting its stride in its second season, Ash vs. Evil Dead is as fun as it is frightening, expanding on both its cocky lead character and its unique mythology in a series of darkly comedic half-hour episodes. Bruce Campbell propels the series forward as its title character, stepping back into his iconic role with ease. Well, Cheryl, it's been fun catching up. Sorry I gotta kill ya. Again. For fans of the film series, the show's only real caveat is its untimely cancellation, but we're holding out hope that the animated revival is still on the table for the near future. Number 13, Bates Motel. A boy's best friend is his mother, or at least this boy certainly is. I'm sorry I left the other night. I just went a little mad. I mean, we all go a little mad sometimes. Bates Motel puts a modernized spin on Psycho, primarily acting as a prequel to the Hitchcock film, with Norman Bates as the show's troubled protagonist. Introducing a new cast of characters and an old town with dark mysteries, the series attempts to explain Norman's mental deterioration and turn towards violence leading up to the events of Psycho. Events which the show cleverly subverts in a fifth season episode starring Rihanna as Marion Crane. It's hard to be lonely. But it's also hard to love people, and I think that that's the trap. Trap? Of course, the show's most interesting exploration isn't of Marion, but of the codependent relationship between Norma and Norman Bates, a mother and son often too close for comfort who viewers know will eventually become one. You're different, aren't you? I don't know. Maybe. I think people who are different don't know they're different because they have nothing to compare it to. Number 12. True Blood The Vampire Diaries is entertaining, but it pales in comparison to the bloody violence and biting satire of True Blood. For starters, True Blood's vampire conceit has real purpose, acting as a timely metaphor for the real-world plight of LGBT people. A metaphor which thankfully never feels hollow by virtue of the show's numerous queer characters, introduced throughout its seven-season run. Too often we're governed by criminals and hypocrites. Don't you agree? But I can tell you a main of virtues, mm -hmm. and I applaud the effort you are making against the Poe and disenfranchised, especially the vampires and the gay. For horror fans, True Blood also provided a much-needed reprieve from the Twilight-inspired teen vampire phenomenon of the time, frequently depicting mature themes and unrestrained depictions of beastly brutality. Sure, the show's later seasons have been called trashy by dissenters, but sometimes trashy can be fun. And that's certainly the case here. Why would we seek equal rights? You are not Oh, equals. Number 11. The Walking Dead. Zombies are grotesque. Their flesh is slowly rotting to reveal the bones underneath, and their lifeless eyes seem to stare at nothing as they stumble towards their next victim. So, how did The Walking Dead manage to break into the mainstream and get 10 million viewers hooked on its apocalyptic narrative? Night of the Living Dead director George Romero has hypothesized that it's because The Walking Dead was TV's most gruesome soap opera. You want me to bring a baby into this to live a short, cruel life? How can you think like that? We can't protect the son we already have! Love triangles, fake-out deaths, big personalities, and a healthy dose of teen angst all compelled audiences to continue watching, even as the show's quality declined. It's as melodramatic as it is morbid, and always undeniably entertaining to watch play out. We wouldn't have it any other way. I'm sorry. If I'd known the world was ending, I'd have brought better books. Number 10. Supernatural. We get it. 
If you were on Tumblr in the days of the Misha apocalypse or just happened to see posts about Super Hell following the show's finale, Supernatural probably seemed like one big joke, but there's a reason it stayed on air for 15 years, and it wasn't because of internet memes. You know what this is? Mimes. Evil mimes. Yeah, or vampires. Vamp. Mimes. Supernatural is everything you could want in a horror TV show. It has monstrous villains designed to haunt your nightmares and often refrains from unnecessary romance plots that would distract from the show's mysteries. It also, importantly, has a good sense of humor and a likable cast of characters making it easily approachable to newcomers of the genre. The perfect gateway horror show. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Woo! He said it! He said the lie! <laughs> Number 9. The Last of Us From Super Mario Bros. to Uncharted, a long series of critical failures caused some to question whether a good video game adaptation was ever possible. Fortunately, The Last of Us has turned the tide in a major way. Swear to me that everything you said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. The show tells the story of a smuggler named Joel, who is entrusted with the care of a teenager with an incomprehensible immunity during a deadly pandemic. The unlikely pair's journey often mirrors that of their video game counterparts. But it's when the show adds on its source material that it goes from good to great. Even the villains of The Last of Us are afforded extra depth in its small screen adaptation, building up a three-dimensional world that becomes impossible to tear yourself away from. He would be horrified by the things I've done. And if you've come to tell me that Michael wouldn't want me to hurt Henry, that he would want me to forgive. I know that too. Number eight, Alfred Hitchcock presents. Good evening, I'm Alfred Hitchcock, and tonight I'm presenting the first in a series of stories of suspense and mystery called, oddly enough, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. With revolutionary works like Rope and Rear Window already under his belt, Alfred Hitchcock made the move from film to television with the anthology series Alfred Hitchcock Presents. The show was hosted by the master of suspense himself, and features thrilling tales of betrayal, murder, and obsession with the occasional clever twist. I don't want to kill her. It's just that she wouldn't leave me alone. In spite of his success in the field, however, Hitchcock actually only directed a handful of the series' episodes, often depending on the work of acclaimed directors like Robert Altman, Ida Lupino, and William Friedkin to make up the show's 36-plus episode seasons. This decision, along with the show's frequent use of pre-existing stories, allowed for a healthy mix of mysteries and moral tales that kept the show's audience captivated for 10 seasons. Personally, I think it's here on the premises. Well, for all we know, it might be right under our very noses. <laughs> Number 7. Hannibal An FBI profiler, Will Graham is an expert in the psyche of serial killers. Unfortunately, he fails to realize his own psychiatrist is a cannibalistic murderer until it's too late. Whenever feasible, one should always try to eat the root. Free-range root. Would you join me at the table? Based on Thomas Harris's novels, Hannibal portrays an elaborate game of cat and mouse between its title character and protagonist, increasing in intensity with each season. While its unique kills and hauntingly beautiful cooking scenes are visual treats, the show's true power is always in its portrayal of this complex central relationship. Will and Hannibal play off each other in a way that's immediately enthralling, with each being fascinated by the other's way of thinking. They pick each other's brains apart until there's nothing left. I know who I am. No. All sense of who you are has been distorted by your illness. Number 6. American Horror Story Riding off of the success of Glee, Ryan Murphy took a turn towards the macabre with American Horror Story. Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. An anthology series, American Horror Story, focuses on a new story each season, often reusing a core cast of actors for its leading roles. Evan Peters and Sarah Paulson are its most frequent collaborators, and alongside the rest of the show's phenomenal recurring cast, they act as genre chameleons switching from darkly comedic to harrowingly dramatic characters with ease. You are the only man for me, because you're like us. Different, but special. The first three seasons of the show are often considered its best, providing a stable foundation of thematically varied but equally well-written stories. But with famous guest stars, surprising musical numbers, and witty satire, you really can't go wrong with any of the series' terrifying tales. It's ironic. Hmm. But I never knew how to live until I died.
Number 5. Buffy the Vampire Slayer For Buffy Summers, high school is hell, literally. Who are you? I'm Buffy. The Vampire Slayer, and you are? In the first season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the titular protagonist learns that her school is built on top of a portal known as the Hellmouth, and it's up to her to save the world from the mystical forces it unleashes. As the show's title implies, this primarily results in fights with vampires, but demons, werewolves, and other malevolent creatures are also fair game. You are the chosen one. You alone can stop them. Who? The vampires. With frightening foes and plenty of interpersonal dramas, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is the best high school horror turned young adult horror that TV has to offer. Of course, if you're in the mood for something a bit darker, the show's spin-off Angel is an equally worthy alternative. Are you still... Yeah, there's not actually a cure for that. Number 4. The Haunting With only two seasons, The Haunting is one of TV's shortest horror anthologies, but it's also one of its best. The first entry, titled The Haunting of Hill House, initially presents itself as a typical ghost story, but quickly unravels into an atmospheric exploration of grief and trauma. In just 10 episodes, audiences are invited not only into a haunted mansion, but into the layered lives of its residents through harrowing flashbacks and modern-day visits from beyond the grave. I don't you. need to hear your excuses. I'm not making your excuses. Bullshit. I saw my <laughs> The second season, Bly Manor, is similarly complex in its approach to a specter-based story this time telling a tale of sapphic love born from mutual understanding. It's at once devastating and charming and sure to leave an impact on anyone who watches it. You said it was a ghost story. It isn't. No? It's a love story. Number 3. The X-Files The truth is out there, and the truth is The X-Files is one of the most terrifying horror shows on TV. Whereas I can respect and admire your passion, they will use it against you. Mulder, the truth is out there. But so are lies. Although the show is most commonly associated with the Greys, a race of admittedly goofy-looking little gray aliens, the extraterrestrials are far from the only creatures encountered by Mulder and Scully on their quest for the truth. One of the show's most horrifying creations, the Fluke Man, is introduced in the show's second season, while its fifth season shows off a real monster of a boss. Ironically, though, some of the show's most spine-chilling stories have human adversaries. From menacing kidnappers to backwoods families, The X-Files often shows humans, not beasts, to be the most dangerous monsters of all. It's insane. Sometimes the only sane response to an insane world is insanity. Number 2. Twin Peaks David Lynch is nothing short of an innovator, and Twin Peaks is his masterpiece. There's a sort of evil out there. Something very, very strange in these old woods. The genre-defying series is campy, melodramatic, and refreshingly surreal. It tests its audience's patience with the unprecedented length of its murder mystery plot and intrigues them with its strange cast of characters. It's also a tonal roller coaster with funny quips giving away to some of the most unsettling sequences captured on film. I got good news. That the mule is going to. Come back in style. After it aired, TV was never the same. The series' significant impact on pop culture eventually led to its revival, with The Return airing almost three decades after its second season finale. With the additional season, Lynch proved he still had what it takes to make an impact, solidifying the show's themes and going out with a bang. Kiss me. Once we cross, it could all be different. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Twilight Zone Picture this, a television series that debuted in 1959 inspiring a theme park ride 35 years later. Now imagine that the same show is rebooted multiple times in 1985, 2002, and 2019. You don't have to travel to another dimension for this to be a reality. That show is The Twilight Zone. My name is Talkie Tina, and I don't think I like you. In the decades following the popular anthology series end, its groundbreaking narratives would remain in the popular imagination, inspiring the next generation of horror. And it isn't all talking dolls and robot baseball players. Many episodes of the show have metaphorical meaning, subtly or not so subtly, commenting on current events and the complexities of human nature. And the pity of it is that these things cannot be confined to the Twilight Zone. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.